I had someone that was uh, making comments on the channel and I thought it was real funny because it made me remember how I hated doing RFPs. And if you don't know what that is, that is request for proposals. You're trying to either get a bid on a big job, but a lot of times that's for government sector jobs. And I remember I was in my office, the owner of the firm comes in and he drops this on my desk. He's like, hey, here's all these government agencies and I want you to start filling out these RFPs. Now, if you've ever done it before, this is not like you fill out one form and you're done. It's an involved, it's a complex process and you, you get the opportunity to potentially pitch, but with those type of deals, they go for the lowest bidder, which I wasn't really interested in those jobs because there was not a lot of margin. So you had to work on volume if you could get it. But an individual had left this stuff talking about grants, solicitation. I am 100% a private sector dude. Not interested in nonprofits. I'm not interested in any of this stuff in the way of government work, government jobs, not interested, never have been. And I started to think about that because once you get caught up in that, it can mess you up because I know someone who was doing very well with government grants and loans and stuff. Then once that money dried up and they had to come out here and compete in the real world, needless to say, they're not competing. They never learned how to compete. They never had a clue how to make it work. They were very good with getting grants and writing proposals. That's a skill set unto, unto itself, but just couldn't make it. Ended up closing the firm and went bankrupt. Now, I've never had a business bankruptcy. Holy moly, the traffic is building early. Never had that, but I have not allowed myself to get in that type of risk nor exposure because one of the things that I've done in these last set of businesses, they've all been organically funded. Spent my own money, spent my own time, spent my own dime. Now, some people will talk about that as real business. There's a whole sector of business devoted to it, but from me to you leave that shit alone just leave it alone learn how to come out here and compete in the real world learn how to compete in the jungle learn how to compete where you have skill sets that are transferable anywhere you go in the world you learn how to sell, I don't care what country you're in, I don't care what culture you're in, you can make it. You know how to look, you learn how to fill out a grant proposal, how many people need that skill set. So when you're developing your skill sets, when you're putting this stuff together, you've got to ask yourself, is this going to serve me well in the future? Because many people are into short-term gain, uh, they're just looking to get a quick lick, they're looking to possibly make some money real quick because with my with the Hustlers Kung Fu show where you can call and ask me business questions I get a lot of people who are looking for immediacy and that's really not a long term play it's about putting out some effort it's about providing value to the world it's about building something and this, this channel, this YouTube channel, I did not make any money from this channel for six months, and I was working hard. I was working like one of those guys chained on the boat, rowing the boat with the, with the guy with the whip, just stroke, stroke, stroke every day doing videos. If I wasn't doing videos, I was looking at video concepts. If I wasn't looking at video concepts, I was working on the first book. I was putting in work. Now, there are many people out there, and there's this new movement that you don't have to work that hard to be successful. The secret, the knowledge, all this other stuff. I will say I believe in personal development and the upper mindset, but I also believe that if you take the two, 
establish a strong belief system, really condition your mind for success, and you work very hard, you cannot help but be successful. And there are many people like the mindset stuff. Uh, I'm going to really do more about that because what I've discovered in my life is positive mental attitude is the gateway. It's the opening door. It's, it's just that. It's just that. The second part is establishing reinforced beliefs. And what that is, say you do, I'll give you an example. First time I did a $30,000 sale. I did the sale and then it was easier to do the next $30,000 sale. Why? Because I had established the belief that I could sell $30,000 worth of product. For you to get to the next level, you have to sell 50, 60,000. Then you have to do it again to reinforce the belief. This is why there are many talented people out there who make 20,000 a year, 30,000 a year, 50,000 a year. We're never gonna make 100,000 a year because they have not reinforced the belief that they are capable of making that money even with the skill sets and the ability. They don't have the mental toolkit to make that happen. Take uh, one of the calls I got, and I'm not picking on them, uh, the scarcity mindset. Money is not scarce. Ideals are not scarce. People who will pay you are not scarce. They're not. Uh, this week I closed two deals on the phone. One is probably going to be when it's all said and done, 20, maybe a $30,000 contract. Uh, the other one, maybe, this is a longer deal, it's a longer place for the year, maybe 100 Gs. Now, I've done that before. So it wasn't like, oh, I didn't get scared and when they were throwing up objections, uh, when they were saying this and that, I knew how to handle it because I had been there before. So it wasn't like, oh God, there's this new thing. and. That is one of the big fears of, in sports, like take Alabama, roll tide, baby, with Clemson. Alabama had coaches, not a coach, but coaches who had won national championships. Alabama had several players who were on the team from the national championship team. They had national championship blood all over the place. They had a lot of folks to reinforce those guys. It's like, hey, hey. They got up on us. It's like, no, we Alabama. We can come back from behind. We can do this. Because they had a reinforced belief that they could do it. Uh, I do believe that if Jake, Jay Coker had got in the game in uh, Mississippi, we would have been undefeated. But that's, that's neither here nor there. What I'm saying is your established and reinforced belief patterns are so powerful. And this is one of the reasons that I don't mess around with government stuff and I don't mess around with charities not to say that they're not worthy, but that's not uh, water I want to swim in. I don't want to mess with it. Mm -mm. I, I, I just remember filling out those RFPs and just being angry, just pissed the fuck off because I didn't want to be there. Because the thing is, when you get out there in the rough, raw world of sales and you start making sales and you, it's, it's like, uh, it's better than orgasm. I mean, seriously, you get that, that deal that's really tough or like maybe a fish that is almost got away and you bring it back and it almost got away and you bring it back. And you just keep doing that. And is this truck on fire? No, okay, that's a tree, Never mind. But you, you keep doing that and then you start to build this mental repository of a belief system. And there's just many people who don't want to put in the work because until you do it, you've never done it. And until you do it twice, it's really just a matter of luck. Uh, when I was doing some of my marketing things, the first time it worked, okay. Second time it worked, hmm. The third time it worked, shit, we got the system. So just because you did it once, doesn't mean anything. Uh, I saw this really interesting video talking about people online and they're they showing how much money they made. And I was cracking up because it was true. How many folks that you're following online have been around for five years or more? Ask yourself that. Not to say that their information is not good. Not to say that they can't help you. Not to say that they may not that they could be around for five years. But ask yourself, how many? And when you start looking at that, and when you start looking at stuff, 
And one of the things that I'm doing with my business is I am getting rid of things I don't want to do. Just for those of you, I don't do affiliate marketing. I don't know anything about affiliate marketing. I don't buy niche websites. I don't know anything about that. I don't do that. I understand that some people are making a lot of money with it, but I'm not really interested in it. And that's something else. You got to operate on your strengths versus trying to strengthen up your weaknesses when your weaknesses may be way weaker than you ever thought. But part of this whole thing of getting in the business, I would say for you to really get started, start selling something. And not online, but face to face. You know, door to door, that gets a little dicey. I mean, I live in a neighborhood where they will call the police on you if you're like soliciting. <laughs> I've seen it happen. There's a neighborhood chat board where it's like, hey, there was someone knocking on doors on this street. They're kind of nuts about that. So I'm not going to say that. But if you can find a company that sells to businesses and, you know, you can still run into it, but you just got more of an option. Uh, that's how I ended up buying a merchant account girl just came to the warehouse and she was like hey hey how you doing I was like what are you doing oh I work for <laughs> so, so and I ended up signing up for one of the merchant accounts that she was selling so it does work but you got to go ahead and position yourself to make those moves now what here's some tips if they're selling a product like maybe merchants are, is crowded is but people need merchant accounts uh, they're selling some other kind of business service. You want to get into something where you actually have to talk to people. You have to pitch them. You Because the thing is, if you get the right product, you can make a lot of money. If you're a salesperson and they have a good payout structure or a good commission structure. And typically for you to get these sweeter jobs and you have not a degree. There's some places if you have a degree, they'll hire you for a salesperson as a salesperson and train you. But if you don't have a degree, if you have proven sales ability, if you're proven that you can close people in an ethical, sane manner, you can get a job at certain places that will blow your mind. After I left Rent-A-Crate, I did not submit any applications. People came after me. I, I was wooed and taking the dinner and stuff. I felt like, oh, the pro oh, like I'm the best looking dude around here all of them are buying me dinner what and that's gonna come from having proven ability proven ability so if you want to build some skill sets be able to actually do something and repeat the process because when I get what I call people who want to demonstrate their knowledge base but they are afraid to set up a YouTube channel or they're afraid to set up a podcast they know that they're going to be challenged and i've been challenged i get challenged every day i get pushed back every day and i, I find this to be really really interesting how many people kind of pull me back and try to pull me into things that i say i don't do uh there was a discussion online about me and ebay i don't sell on ebay don't bring it actually advise people not to do it and then there was a, a conversation about me with Amazon FBA and how I was doing. Um, no, I don't talk about that. And the reason they wanted to pull me back in those conversations was because that was their position of strength. They didn't want to have a conversation about taking the business from absolutely nothing, creating a marketing plan, creating a sales force, employing customer relationship management protocols, looking at accounting, Oh, how to sign up with vendors, how to get merchandisers to pay. Oh, they didn't want to have those conversations because I would be the only one in the room talking and it would just be cricket, cricket, silence because they don't know. And one of the reasons that I say go out and start a business from scratch is you're going to learn these skills because you will have to. Uh, can you make money with eBay? Yeah. Can you make money with Amazon? Yeah. Now, the thing is, how long is that going to last? Uh, you know, and don't give me unicorns because you know, well, this guy, his name is Jeremiah. He's been doing it for 20 years. Okay, look behind the curtain. Jeremiah has an IQ of 200. Do you have an IQ of 200? Probably not. So you can't do it like Jeremiah. And that's something that just pisses me the fuck off. Everybody like to proud bring out a unicorn as if it's the 
the norm. Like Serena uh, Williams and Venus Williams, like they're normal. They're not normal. These girls are one genetically gifted. Yeah, I said it. And it's like anyone can do that. And I think their greatest strength is their mental toughness. Uh, or you take someone like Cuban or uh, Zuckerberg. Timing had a lot to do with those fortunes. Timing had everything to do with those fortunes because when you come in first with something that's going to be an international wave and you execute and you execute well and you put the proper team together, it's kind of hard to lose. And that, that's one of the things that happens out here in the world of business because when you are talking to people and you're putting together your business plan, all of your blind sides and deficiencies are going to just pop up and they're going to be glaring. Uh, let's go back to the comment of the real business. And I think this person is ghetto because any business that makes money is a real business. It may not be a scalable business. It may not be a business that you can franchise. It may not be a business that you can build to a point to pay your bills, but it is a real business. Uh, during the comment, because it, it kept bothering me because I saw a lot of things that don't make sense. Solicitation license, charity, uh, grants, charity, government, like, whoa, 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 whoa. I know some people who try to do both, but the people who were the most successful, like, go back to the firm I used to work for years ago. The reason all those RFPs was there, because nobody wanted to do them. I was supposed to be the RFP owl. Who RFP? Who RFP? And I was like, I just did a shitty job on purpose. So he was like, Yeah, I filled them out. They didn't know one ever got back to me. All right. And I went out there and knocked on doors and took people to showrooms because that's where the action was. That's where the money was. And it was quicker. Uh, you get someone on a small office deal, they close. I mean, you get paid in a matter of days. RFPs, you get paid in a matter of months or years. Ah, no, no, said the aisle, no. But when you want to start this thing, and uh, like I said, I appreciate a lot of the calls, just to give you some clarity on how I do it. I don't call too many people back. And the reason is a lot of the calls are general. A lot of the calls I could pop in the video, go ahead and answer that question and potentially provide more benefit to everyone. So that's how I, the reason I do it that way. But just a nod or a little little drop of knowledge in your mind about business what you should do where you should start and a little bit of a rant I actually just met a friend downtown and uh, got some great intel because when you get out and you start doing stuff you see things that you can't see when you refuse to expand your perspectives just a thought all right so if you like this content you should go below the video I've got a few things for you I will teach you how to make money those are webinars you get on that list there's a free webinar there's a free course that's by email and that then I'll periodically send you some hot stuff also if you want to be a salesperson I've got some recommendations for you now below the video is an audible trial where you can get one free book cost you nothing I recommend free agent nation by Daniel Pink I'll have it all below in the links and everything that you need because this book was written in 2002 and it was so spot on on what was happening and what's yet to come you may not want to start a business but you may have to start a business because jobs as we know it are evaporating better paying jobs are hard to get unless you're connected it's just really rare that you know unless you have a, a hard skill like nursing or you're a doctor or some if you you're a nurse you you have a license you can go pretty much any state as long as your stuff is straight you can get a job most jobs are not like that most jobs you know that pay a certain amount once you get past the six figure mark it's about your network it's about your recommendations it's about who you know it's very, very important. And one of the best ways to get a lot of people to know you and recommend you is to go back to what I was saying. Become a person who can get results. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you in the next episode.